Today, everyone, we are going to be talking about leadership, how you are a leader, and how you can be an even better one. Let's go for it. Hello everyone, my name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Our mission here is to be a lifeline by leading people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. And believe it or not, we're going to actually talk a little bit about that today and coming up this Sunday. I'm really excited to, to dive into our mission and begin a new series called Be a Lifeline that we do every single year. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun for us to know a little bit more about where we're going and how we're going to get there. I believe that no matter where you're watching from, that God has helped you to be here for this video so that you can hear something that's going to help you so that you can hear something, a message of hope, encouragement, and love that's going to speak into your life today. And I just believe that he's going to do that. Now, if you would be so kind as to like, comment, and share this content, that would help a lot in, in helping someone hear this who needs to hear it. You just never know who's one click away from uh, being moved and impacted by the message that we have. You may not know this, but if you follow Jesus, you are called to leadership in some capacity. Now, that doesn't mean you're supposed to be in charge of everything everywhere. It just means that following Jesus inherently means that we are to lead others in some ways and at some times. And the next step that you have in that leadership depends on your position on the path. In other words, where you are dictates where you should go next. I know that's painfully obvious, but it's still overlooked sometimes. Where do I go next? Where do I go next? Well, where are you? That is the first step in knowing what your next step is, is where am I now and where do I want to go? Seeing where you are uh, with reality colored glasses, I know that you've heard the term, we, we can look at our life with rose colored glasses. That's like looking at things in their best light. But we need to look at our lives and where we're at with reality colored glasses. And it can be hard to do sometimes. Oftentimes we think we're doing better than we really are or that we're doing worse than we really are. Um, rarely does it seem like we have a firm grasp on where exactly I am. That's why it's so important to have people around us that can help us, that will tell the truth to us, that will show us, then this is where you're at, man. <laughs> this, is, this is what I see in you. This is what I see that you're dealing with. This is where I see uh, you should probably go next because that is the very reason the Bible talks about so consistently the importance of having life groups, the, the small groups of people all around us. I know that we can all, probably all relate to that because I know I've been there speeding down the highway thinking my exit isn't for a while. You know, you're just cruising, cruising, you know, you're thinking about something. I wonder what for what's for dinner. And then boom, Kettleman is like way back there. And I just missed my exit because I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know my position on the highway. So I missed my exit. I mean, have you ever missed your exit? It can happen in a heartbeat. It happens to all of us. We need to know our position on the path so we don't miss an important milestone in our life. Now, when it comes to leadership, the milestone is not in your words but it's in your actions. It's in your actions. This is very, very important to understand. Listen to the Apostle Paul out of 1 Corinthians 10. I'm gonna read this for you. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 33, and then it goes into chapter 11, verse one. So it's 10, 33, and then 11, one. 1 Corinthians, it says this. Paul is, is talking to this church in Corinth. And he says this, he says, I too, try to please everyone in everything I do. I thought people pleasing was bad. I, don't, I just always heard it was a bad thing, but apparently Paul is like, I try to please everybody in everything I do. It says this, 
I don't just do what is best for me. I do, listen to how many I do's. In it, please everyone in everything I do, I don't just do what is best for me, I do what is best for others so that many may be saved. And watch this, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Listen everybody, this is starting to get very real. Contrary to popular belief, leadership is not managing people's behavior. Leadership is inspiring behavior modeled by what you do. I'm going to say that again. Leadership is not managing people's behavior. That is management. And management's not a bad word. We need management. Management is very important. But leadership is not managing behavior, but it's inspiring behavior by what you do. It's showing, it's not telling people what to do. In other words, I don't lead people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus by telling them what to do. I, I lead people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus by showing people what to do with my own life. My words have power. My, your words have power. Telling people what to do is an important factor. But where the rubber meets the road is when I show people my life. That's why Paul said, everything I do, everything I do is, is, is going towards that, that level of leadership. It's the difference between, and, and let me know if you uh, know what I'm talking about here. It's the difference between a travel agent and a tour guide. Who's ever um, been on a tour somewhere? You ever been somewhere and they took you on a tour, maybe you went to someone's house and they showed you around, you know, uh, or maybe you've actually been on a trip. You actually went somewhere. I was supposed to go to Israel this year. I'm not bitter though. I'm not bitter at all. No, no, no. Not better. Okay, I'm a little better, but it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna be better. I'm getting counseling for it. It's gonna be great. We were supposed to go to Israel and we were gonna have a tour guide. Now, we also had a, a travel agent. The travel agent is the one who booked our flights and they told us, you know, you're gonna you're gonna land here and then you're gonna go there and then you're gonna be over here, but but the travel agent never never went there. The travel agent hasn't been there, doesn't is not telling us what it's like. The tour guide, when we get there, saying, look at, we, he's been there. We're, we're following them and they're showing us exactly step by step where to go because they've been there before. It's like, I can tell you what a, what a three bedroom, two bath house is probably laid out like, but I can, I can give you a tour of my home because I've lived there. I know all the nooks and crannies. I've tripped over all the rugs. I've done all the stuff. I can do that because I've been there. I can show you exactly what it's like and I can help you not to stumble because I've been there. That's leadership. Management is saying, oh, you know, you're gonna land at 11.05 and then you're gonna uh, wait for the bus and then you're gonna be over there and it's it's management and and trust me we need that we can never get there if we didn't have a travel agent but we are not travel agents as Christ followers we don't just sit back and tell people what to do we don't just hand out Bibles on the street corners and say hey do what it says it's a great start. I mean, it's a start. I don't know if it's a great one, but what we're called to do is to invite people to do what Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Follow me. I've been there. I've struggled with this. I've done this. And don't think that we can't be leaders if we ever had a failure. Because it's our failures and where we've stumbled and, and what we've struggled with that actually gives us the credibility, actually gives us the insight. I know what it means to struggle with that. So I can tell you exactly what you need to do not to struggle in that yourself. It's a beautiful thing. And so don't think that 
failure or some kind of mistake is some kind of disqualification because it's absolutely not. If you find yourself having trouble leading people, the action step is very clear. Check your actions. And this, this applies to following Christ, but this also applies to your role at work. This also applies to your marriage. This also applies to your parenting. If you're having trouble with people following you, it may be because you haven't checked your own actions in a while. Where are, if people were to imitate you, would that be a good thing? And I'm not asking for your perfection here because that's not attainable. But what I am saying is, are, are you repenting if you do make a mistake? If, are, you, are you owning those failures? Are you owning those things that, those short, shortcomings? Are you owning those things and repenting and, and turning to r- the right way? Because that's leadership. If you can do that and then help people as you're doing that, that's true leadership. I want to just remind you that Um, Failure is not a disqualification. If you've ever made a mistake, that doesn't mean you can't help someone else overcome that same mistake. You can. You absolutely can. And making a mistake or having a shortcoming doesn't exclude you from this mission of leading people into becoming lifelong Jesus followers. In fact, I believe it can even be an asset. Not that God designed or wants us to go through those shortcomings. I mean, that's the beauty of even having co-leaders like Tiffany and myself. Tiffany living a upstanding life, never making a mistake ever. Of course, she'd probably say that's not true. And then you've got me who's made um, my share of mistakes for the whole church. Nobody has to make any mistakes because I've made mistakes enough for everybody. And so those two backgrounds are, are hopefully leading the way that no matter what your background is, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you struggle with, Tiffany and I, between the two of us, peanut butter and jelly, we've, we've got you covered. We've got something that you can look to and say, hey, you know what? I'm like Ellie. I've made a ton of mistakes in my life, but, but if he's moving towards Jesus in a growing relationship with Jesus, then maybe I can do that too. And maybe you're like, grew up maybe in the church or with a family with great values and all this stuff like Tiffany. My family had great values too, but Tiffany just didn't act on a lot of the things I did. And so maybe that's your background too. And she has a, the same, the growing relationship with Jesus. Maybe you would say, I'm, I'm like that. I, 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 can, I can follow that. I can, I can imitate that. I can follow that and I can, I can move forward with that. I believe that you're in the right place if you're watching this video or even Um, a part of the Lifeline family. We've got something for you and we want to see you grow in your leadership. We're so proud of you. We're so grateful for you. And as always, please be sure to uh, share this with anybody. Uh, Comment on this. If if the content blessed you, just say amen or anything like that really actually helps in getting the word out. Liking. Is that how you like stuff? That's how you like right there. But uh, Go ahead and share this and and do anything that you can to help get that word out. You never know who really needs to hear this message. Uh, Let me go ahead and pray for you before we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm just so grateful and thankful for everybody tuning into this message today. I pray that they would uh, not look at their shortcomings or failures as disqualifications, but as growing tools that that they can repent from and and learn from and, and help others with in the long run as well. I'm so grateful for them. I pray a blessing over every single person listening to this. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. And we will see you again very soon.